Happy Monday, y'all. So this morning I woke up um, and I was eating my breakfast when I had the distinct impression that I needed to make a part two. I didn't want to make a part two. I thought that part one was, you know, wasn't perfect, but I felt like I covered everything. And that is when Heavenly Father impressed upon me that I needed to share more of my own story, my own snare, and how he helped me out of that because um, because there are people out there that are that are currently suffering and, and they need more guidance on how to get out of the snare. And, and that's what an addiction is. That's what sin is. It's a snare, right? And we are all prone to um, getting caught in sins and snares and temptations because we're human. But I want you to know that, you know, Heavenly Father, He is your Father. You know, for those of us who are parents, I want you to realize that that is how we must see our Father in Heaven as a parent. And as a parent, we would do anything for our children. And it would never be too late for them because we love them unconditionally. Unconditionally, and that is how um, Heavenly Father feels about us. So. I want to talk about my snare just briefly. I'm not going to go into detail because I'm, well, it doesn't matter. A snare is a snare, but also I'm still healing from it. So over two years ago, I made a decision. Um, it wasn't a sin. It was just, it was just a silly decision. And when I decided to make this decision right before I made it, there were some little like red flags. And instead of praying about it. I just went ahead and, and made it, made the decision because I thought I was just, I thought that the red flags were just me being insecure. Um, but as it came time to get closer and closer to make this decision, the red flags were um, waving, you know, like, don't do this, Beth, don't do this. Uh, but because it was something funny and silly, I, I made light of it and didn't think it was a big deal. And because of that silly decision, um, because of that, Satan saw a weakness in me. A weakness that had probably, well, it had always been there a little bit um, and it would come and go, but I was always strong enough to fight it off. But because of this decision that I made, um, he chose to uh, exploit that weakness and it sent me down a very dark, dark path. Um, and I, I wrote a poem about it. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I want to read some of it to you because I want it. I hope that it will help you get out of your own snare. And then I want to talk about, um, how, how God helped me heal from it through this video. He, he, I really want you to watch this video. It is a short video. It is a very, very powerful. And it is, it is how um, I was able to partly get out of it. But then, you know, an addiction and a snare, sometimes you get wrapped, wrapped up back in it. And I had to keep going back to this video. So if you're, if you're caught in something and you feel like you can't get out, or maybe you were out of it for a little while and then you got back into it, there is hope. There is hope. Um, and I don't want you to give up. So one of the things that helps me when I'm caught in, in some kind of snare or, or if I'm dealing with um, anxiety or depression, which I feel can also be, that's also a type of snare. I mean, it's a mental illness, but sometimes we, we can't with anxiety, for instance, you, you can't stop thinking about it. Like that catastrophic thinking, your mind won't shut off. And so that can become a snare, right? And so one of the ways that helps me is to write and I wrote this poem um, in October talking about my snare. And when I was caught up in this snare, there was a time when I, when I asked why, you know, why, you know, Heavenly Father, you know my weaknesses, you knew that this was gonna happen to me and why did you allow it to happen to me? And I was very prideful in it because it was, I kept making bad decisions, you know, and then I would repent. <laughs> and then I would be like, okay, I'm like help me get out of it and then you know like an addiction you kind of it's like this sometimes right um and while i was caught up in this um there was a point where he said 
where he explained to me that I was going to be able to help other people, that I needed to recover from it, get through it, and then help other people. And I, and I just thought, well, I'm never going to be able to talk about this. Like, this is really, like, this is painful. I'm never going to be able to tell it. And he's like, Beth, just wait, just wait. And then I think it was probably a month later, I got um, a message in Facebook Messenger from from a, a young lady. Uh, she's like in her 20s. And she she sent me a message and, and it was and it was an odd message. She had a question for me. And I, um, I, I answered her question and, and she was shocked by my answer. And I said, I asked her, I'm going to call her Amber. I said, Amber, why, why are you asking me this question? Because I felt like there was something more to it. And that's when she opened up to me. And her, this snare that she had been caught up in was very similar to my own. But I was much further down and caught more into it. And so I, I just lovingly, um, I didn't tell her, I told I didn't tell her that I was caught up in the same snare, uh, but I told her that I understood and I gave her some advice and she, she said, thank you, Beth. And, and then later on, there were some other things that happened where people were able to come to me, not caught up in the same snare, but in a snare that, that I, I didn't judge them for and I was able to help them. Um, and I'm not saying that, that, that God, allowed this to happen to me so that I could help other people. I made my own decisions. This, I made the choice. Some bad choices. And I got caught up in this snare. But he told me to, um, you know, not dwell on the negative things that I, that I did, but instead to um, use it for good, right? Because that's what he does. He takes our weaknesses and he can turn them into something that's, that's good and beautiful. So that we can help other people and that's what the gospel is about right we can like paul rejoice in our infirmities and in our sicknesses and, and in our distresses and our reproaches and our persecutions all of these things knowing that we can go to god and he will help us and then we can help other people right that fellowship okay i'm just going to read some of this it says this is what i wrote this on october 30th uh, 2021 it says I lived in doubt, and the servant observed and drew me out. Many gathered in close while I suffered in silence, and the devil laughed and ensured my compliance. I sobbed and petitioned for a reprieve. Where is the Lord to comfort my grief? I repented again and again and again that I was weak and transgressed, then fell back into sin. And the mockers mocked and continued their plan while the serpent rejoiced in the natural man. Angels were sent as I fought this great battle. I was blessed with revelation, but treated it as babble. I wept as it left, being caught in the snare. Am I bound here forever without repair? In pride I asked why. Have I not been thy faithful servant? Have I not preached and proclaimed this gospel in fervence? For 27 months I was tossed back and forth. Then, alas, my day star guided me north. It was dark and I was drowning in the depths of despair when he stretched out his arms as I gasped for air. He pulled me in close and said, come follow me. Let me heal you and save you from your silent misery. I looked up with supplication, burning my eyes. Please forgive me for attending to the father of lies. Tears fell from my face, soaking his feet in the floor. He knelt down beside me and said, cry no more. Thy sins are forgiven. This is what I came for. While wrapped in the Savior's arms, I heard the Father speak. In the beginning, I offered peace, knowing your weaknesses and your strengths. My child, this is a snare you never understood. Now you will comfort others in a way you never could. Instead of judgments and looks, you will offer something new. Your tears and compassion will aid in their rescue. You are strong and your covenants have remained intact, but others have fallen greater and you can help bring them back. Continue on your mission, preaching and reverence, the love I have and the healing of repentance and that through my 
my son. There is always forgiveness. So I hope that that my story and my words will help you and know that whatever you're facing, you can get out, but then go and help others pull them out of their snares. You don't have to tell all of your story. You don't even have to tell your story. Sometimes just being a listening ear. Um, I want to share this scripture with you. And then we'll talk about um, just a couple of other things that I wanted to help pull you out of that. Um, this is a scripture in Doctrine and Covenants. At, at first it sounds harsh, okay? But remember, God loves his children. So I don't want you to look at it as harsh. I want you to look at it as kind of like a loving warning, okay? So um, it says, But behold, verily I say unto you, that there are many who have been ordained among you, whom I have called, but few of them are chosen. They who are not chosen have sinned a very grievous sin, in that they are walking in darkness at noonday. I'm going to stop right there. Um, you know, many of us have been chosen, and you, you choose whether you want to be highly favored or not. I've said that many times, and, and I believe that. And so in order to be highly favored, you you don't give up. And I have made a lot of mistakes, but I never give up. I always I always go to him and help him or ask for help, you know. And so I don't want you to give up. Um, but I also don't want you walking in darkness at noonday. I mean, what a... You know, what a, a, a description, right? Noonday, the sun is so bright and it's right there and you're walking in darkness and that's what snares and sins and temptations and addictions are. You know, you're walking in noonday and no one knows what you're suffering, but you are in darkness, spiritual darkness. And, and Heavenly Father doesn't want that for you. He doesn't want that for his children. Um. So I want you to set a date, a date that is important for you to help you. I'm telling you, I've done some research and, and setting dates, there's something about that that can be powerful. So if you've got a date in mind, um, set that date. For me, it was my birthday at first, my 40th birthday, you know, when I was caught in that addiction of, of, of soda. And then I messed up. So then I was like, okay, I need a new date. And then... Um, it became January 1st. Now, hopefully your date isn't like six months away, uh, but choose a date. Maybe it's your birthday. Maybe it's your parents' anniversary, or maybe it's the day you got baptized or, or find a date that's close and then um, fast and pray and ask for guidance. Okay. Another one is uh, don't be idle. Don't be bored. I talked about this in the first one, but that's really important. A lot of people that are in addictions, they're, they're, they're caught up in them when they're bored, when they're being lazy. So, so be, go and create. We are, um, creatures that, that should create, you know, whether it's a song or a poem, right. Or, or maybe you are into art or dance. I love dancing. Um, you know, whatever it is, whatever your talent is, go in and create one of the, when I was really, having a hard time in this trial I created this video and it was a day like I don't I didn't want to create a video um but looking back I had been I was sobbing on the floor that day that morning you can tell I was in distress um and I was praying and I'm like I need help I can't get out of the snare I need help I need help and heavenly father said Beth what makes you happy and I'm like preaching the gospel preaching about my savior. That's what makes me happy. And he said, well, go make a video. And I'm like, I can't make a video. I'm a mess. I can't make a video. And he said, yes, you can go make one right now. So I made this video. Um, and it was very, very difficult to make. So find something to, to use your talents or go serve. If you feel like maybe you're still trying to figure out your talents, go serve, go be of service to someone and friends, you know, um, Choose good friends. If you have a friend that keeps pulling, maybe it's a friend that you've had for years and you love them and, and you just, I'm telling you, you, it's not that you don't, you can't be their friend anymore, but you need, if they're a good friend, then you're going to say, Hey, this is what I want to do. And I need your support. And if you love me and you're a good friend, then you're going to support me and you're not going to, um, 
make fun of me or or ridicule me you know you're gonna love me unconditionally and if they don't then it's time to say goodbye doesn't mean you don't love them but it's time to say goodbye and that could be a family member too okay so just be careful who you surround yourself with um i want you to know that god loves you and he will absolutely help you out of your snare and then you go and help other people and you will be blessed and you will feel um hope and encouragement and and it will help you heal from that snare when you help others out of it. I know that that's true. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen.